Hey everybody, Stefan the All In Nerd here, back again with another Iron Man update video. This time around didn't take that long in between the videos, and hopefully it won't take that long before they all are out. And except for these videos, I've been doing a lot of repair work and upgrades to the suit. Being able to wear it for two days on Comic Con really gave me some useful information, and a lot of ideas on what to upgrade and how. Except for being able to wear it better? How does shoulder rockets or some mechanics in the dongle sound? Sounds pretty good to me. In this update I'm gonna cover the arms, which include the shoulder pad, the bicep, the elbow, the forearm, and also the hand chopper that cover the glove. Starting with the shoulders. Nothing extraordinary. They're just big and chunky, and a solid piece that I can print in one go, which is really convenient. But I haven't mastered the settings of my printers yet. And therefore the bottom, if it's rounded, usually needs some extra love and attention. And I did print this one with the rounded part facing down, to save some filament on supports. Some rounds of wood putty, sanding, and it started to take shape. It's already time to paint it. Some hot rod red sprayed on. Then I spent some time painting some Nuln Oil in parts that should be a bit darker. And this is something that I've done on all my parts by the way. Followed by some silver scratches painted on with an old brush, and some black painted on with my airbrush. And all my pieces have a layer of satin varnish sprayed on to try and protect the paint at least. And here's the final shoulder piece. I did put in a big buckle here in the center of the shoulder to attach it to this, the back piece, but it was a bit fiddly. So I put in two small ones as well to make it a bit more stable. And it did the trick, but it was quite hard to connect. So I'm gonna redo them somehow. Maybe I'll just replace the small ones with some elastic bands and velcro in the future. On to the biceps. The biceps were also solid pieces, so easy to print. Before fitting them with elbows, there wasn't that much to do, except for cutting off a chunk in the top, so it fitted my arm and would be easier to move around beneath the shoulder. And here you can see the brackets for the elbow hinges. I'll cover those with the elbow shortly. And now it's time to paint these cannons. I used some frog tape and sheets of paper to cover the red when painting the gold. Then when I thought they were done, I noticed that this part in the back was supposed to be gold as well, so another round of frog tape and paper. And let's check how they turned out. Actually, it was in the morning of the first day of Comic Con that I first attached the, the bicep and the whole arm to the back piece with the scrap. I couldn't do it before that. And I had already taken two weeks off from work, just to have time to fix everything. And those two weeks included lack of sleep and a whole lot of crunching just to finish on time. And I did! Well, at least the first draft. Now let's check out the elbows. Since the model didn't come with an end blueprint on how to attach the elbows to the biceps and forearms, I needed to come up with a solution for that myself. First I designed and tried a two arm hinge that did the work but not really the way I wanted it to. The elbow wasn't really following the other parts and it kind of got stuck easily. So back to the drawing board. So I started searching for a printable version. And I searched about 97.5% of the internet, but without any luck. One eternity later. I'll bet there's one on the dark web. But then I thought about the hinges I used for my legs, and that maybe I could design something like that. After some fiddling in on shape, I did a small prototype to see if I could print it in one piece and still have it moving. After removing some annoying supports, the test have proved to be a success. So a bigger version was made and I was back in business. I attached the middle of the hinge to the elbow and I PLA welded the brackets into the bicep and forearm and I heated the hinge arms with my heat gun and formed them to fit the brackets. But apparently I forgot to print it as a solid piece so one actually broke when I wore it on Comic Con. But of course I had brought my hot glue gun so I could repair it before day two. Now I have four new ones reprinted so I am in the middle of replacing the other ones. Hey guys! Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now give me some paint. Alright, some paint's coming up. And here's how it turned out. And now we reached the forearm. This was the part of the arm that I had the most fun with building. The forearm consists of two parts, and the big one was a bit too big to print in one piece, so I split it in the middle. Then I PLA welded the parts together again. These two parts were somehow supposed to be connected, 
and on the first arm that I printed that was too small, I PLA welded them together. But this time I wanted to try something new. So I designed these bearings that I fitted in between the two parts. Before PLA welding it to the upper part, I had to cut off a piece from that. It turned out quite sweet. Then it was time to start with the arm missile on the right arm. I attached a printed plate to use as a foundation, to build the mechanism for opening and closing the hatches. Then I cut off the hatch part. Before continuing with the missile, I attached the other part with the bearing on this one as well. And I had to fit the forearm to the elbow as well. I glued the parts together with hot glue to be able to try it on and see if it fitted. It was a bit too long, so I had to do some adjustments to the forearm. And now it was time to cut the hatches apart. Then the fun and sometimes not so much fun work started. Tedious and sometimes brain dead work. But rewarding is how I would describe it. And since I've done it before on my other arm, I thought it would go a lot easier this time. But I was wrong! I used one servo for each hatch. And for the sides I made an extra support arm to make the hatches a bit more steady. Since the hatches are rounded and it wasn't that much room to play with, getting the arms to move smoothly back and forth into the exact right position was tricky. I guess becoming an engineer would make this part so much easier. Now it looked like a mess, so I made some parts to cover up the servos and in the front. And I attached a cable piece that would be attached to the bicep later on. And that would get plugged in with a cable from the back piece, where the Arduino board is placed. But the cable was a bit stiff, so I couldn't really twist my arm the way I wanted to. So I peeled off the outer plastic and I covered them with a flexible cable protection hose. Now it's time to check out the paint job. I actually painted the whole inside of the arm missile with a brush. So here's the finished forearms. At first I just had a small blue single LED as a light source, but it was far from enough from what I wanted, so I changed it for two LED strips with three LEDs each, to make it pop a bit more. And it did pop a lot more. As I said, it's still a work in progress, so right now I'm replacing the missile, the top hatch and the mechanics for that. And this one isn't good enough either. Here's the new one that I'm gonna replace this one with. And I'll probably come up with a better solution for the side hatches as well. I'm really impressed by this solution from Joel Carter for example. It's a really clean and sweet way of doing it. So be sure to check out his Instagram. But I still want my side hatches to open the way they're doing right now. I just need a more stable and reliable solution. The change to the top hatch turned out great though. Alright, let's finish this with the hand toppers. First I printed them in PLA. But since they were going to scratch a lot against the hands, I thought that maybe flexible PLA could work better. And I think it did. I mean you can hear the difference. This is PLA against PLA. And this is PLA against flexible. Flexible PLA doesn't sand as easy as normal PLA. So I just went over it roughly and then primed them and painted them several times instead. And in between each coat of paint I sanded it down to make it smoother. Sure you lose a little bit of flexibility when painted, but they weren't going to flex much anyway. And when I was happy with the paint, I tried to find a way to attach them either to the forearms, the gloves or both. I didn't really like how they looked when attached to the forearms. So I glued them into the hands with some elastic bands. And here's how they look now, after some more modifications. I attached some velcro to the elastic bands, so I can easily open them up and access the connections to the gloves that I fitted here in the top. I think they turned out alright. And I'll head deeper into the electronics and how I did it in another video. And here's the arms fully done.
And that, my friends, is the end of this update. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section below or contact me on any other social medias. Until next time. Pew -pew!